How's your week going, Joe? <sighs> Welcome back to A People's Guide to Publishing. Our news this week is that we're getting solar panels installed. And through a confluence of circumstances, it is now cheaper to have solar power in the city of Portland than it is not to. We love a bargain, and we need something to shade the roof because our office gets so hot. Mm -hmm. And even better, if we can take all that too hot and turn it into electricity, which mm -hmm. is really kind of an ideal outcome. Instead of just sweat and swearing, which is what we used to convert it into. And the rest of this week has been spent building the bread of the resistance into a paperback book which is our shockingly timely book about how to make sourdough bread. So this week we have a reader question. What do you think of Diamond's stopping production and how it's affected the comic book world? Well, let's take like 15 steps back and explain that Diamond Comics is now the sole distributor for about 2,300 comic book stores. The all of which you would describe variously as independent in the United States. So if you are a comic book store, that is where you get your comic books from. Mm -hmm. uh, what results when you have a large network of one kind of independent store that relies on just one distributor? Anytime you have a monopoly, in this case, it yeah, market penetration is very difficult. You know, I'm old enough, or Microcosm is old enough, more importantly, to remember a time when there were five competitors for Diamond. You could have your pick of where you order your comic books from. And variously, one by one, they went out of business, and we were left with Diamond. And then what happened in March of 2020? And then Diamond issued a very sudden notice that... Was it related to some world event? Yeah, I heard there's a global pandemic that they would cease warehouse operations, they would cease ordering from publishers, and they would cease outgoing payments. So basically, if you're a comic book store, you cannot get comic books. If you are a publisher, you do not sell and you do not get paid, even for books that have already sold. And this is bad because, I mean... I because this is the entire <laughs> underpinning of the industry? I'm not sure how to answer that. Yeah, I mean, I guess, like, during the pandemic, like, not everything has actually stopped. Yeah. Like, we still, publishers still have to sell books and pay their staff, and stores are still doing, like, booming business online and with pickup orders. And so to just, like, if we had had this kind of supply chain problem, that would have really hurt us. Would have destroyed us, yeah. The book trade industry, it's not exactly the same because you have some alternatives. But on the book side, you have Ingram, who is a wholesaler that if you are a bookstore, you can order books from them and they will arrive the next day and you can pretty much get any book you want or can dream of that where there is actual activity on that title. If any other store is ordering it, you can order it as well. Our sales at Ingram under COVID, we had like a one week dip and then every week since we're up. And so we're actually selling more than double at Ingram what we were the week before COVID. I'm just gonna put it out there again. People are buying books. And you know, a lot of the stores are complaining that they have to work harder for less money. And that's valid, of course. Like, though, you know, we do pretty much all those kind of operations year round with pickup and shipment and you know having the infrastructure for web sales and that in many ways it kind of sadly feels like we've long prepared for a pandemic covid world of book selling but yeah. also for the better i mean honestly like because we were set up to do this this is good for us the people coming to our store were sometimes coming to browse books and get recommendations and have that experience but often they were just coming to try to like get a meeting with us to pitch their book or to ask yeah. us for change or to see if we bought sold cigarettes and so for us it's actually kind of better but like that's not the business model of most bookstores or publishers uh, yeah. yeah and so this is the bigger problem publishers rely upon retail stores to outsource all of their marketing to so they spend their marketing dollars training retail staff how to sell their books versus marketing it themselves. Like this has been the hundred plus year old tradition of publishers. So this is the real problem of stores being closed and doubly so for comic book stores 
because even if they were savvy and had curbside pickup, they couldn't get books. They would have to try to sell their old books to customers who already had read them. Yeah. And new comics are the driving force in the comics world. Whereas the other primary difference is that in the publishing world, you don't have to order from Ingram. You can order from the publishers. You can order from the big five publishers. Whereas in comics, you can't make an order from Marvel or DC because they're distributed exclusively by Diamond. You know, and that's been the nature of that business for so long. The other major shift, DC Comics brought in two lightweight alternative distributors to each service half of the country with their books. And, you know, this, I I was like, okay, finally, there's going to be some competition for Diamond. This will be a wholly great thing. You know, and I asked our key account sales manager, Christine, to evaluate if this is something that we should do. And she said, oh, Joe. Well, you don't know. And then she told me a story and sent me a link to a number of news articles about comic book stores owners responding to this and basically saying, so basically we have to buy DC Comics through these other companies that we don't work with currently. We will likely, we will not get the same terms we received through Diamond. And every time this has happened in the past, we have been forced to buy and sell these books at a loss, basically to maintain this business. So it is actually preferable just to not sell DC Comics, which that was not the answer I was expecting. I kind of thought opening it up would be healthy. But, you know, again, all this stuff is, you know, major, major investment, you know, to service 50 states and, you know, ship and manage inventory for an entire industry, you know, probably a million titles a year. So So I guess like my questions now are what happens if Diamond does come back because there's been a disruption and what happens if they don't come back? Right. In the more likely event that Diamond does come back, they would probably be struggling to make the payments that they are Mm -hmm. owing to publishers because you know, similarly, they're not going to be getting paid on time by all of their retailers that owe them money, you know, and that's sort of the the work of a distributor is you're sort of a pass-through, books pass through you, money passes through you, you are a, like a systems integration ERP, and, you know, that's why everybody outsources those things to you, because you're good at them, up until the point where the systems break down. And in the mm. less likely event that Diamond fails and goes bankrupt or, you know, some such, the most likely outcome would be that a new version of Diamond would emerge Mm -hmm. after having defaulted on all those publisher payments and would sort of reestablish staff ownership, financial liability. And that honestly seems more likely than a couple companies competing over that. But I guess that is a possibility as well, that the alternative distribution network could actually come in and offer a substantive replacement for those services. Hopefully. And mind you, this is 2,300 comic book stores that rely on this one company, you know. So it's a huge part of the industry. So the best case scenario is someone figures out how to get competition back in the mix, but that is an uphill battle. That would be the best case scenario. So Diamond services everything from like the Avengers all the way down to like I may I self published this comic in my parents' basement, you know. And there is a market for it that I have built up over time at conventions. Yeah. The real biggest problem with Diamond is that they then become the tastemakers of the entire industry. And if Diamond says no to you, you have no alternative. And your book is simply not available to retailers. Which, you know, so this would really be the best reason for introducing competition in what we call the direct market. So the questioner also wanted to know, like, what do we think of Diamond in general as a small publisher? Mm-hmm. Like, how did that work out for us? And we've been working with them for many years, decades. Even. Yeah, since uh, Things Are Meaningless was our first. Oh, wow. So we were a very small publisher at that time. We Yeah, we had a number of books you could count on one hand. Wow. <laughs> and yeah, what was it like working with Diamond at the very beginning? 
it was a lot easier, honestly. There were competitors, for one thing, and, you know, the buys were larger. Um, so you basically just had to say, like, I made this graphic novel. Yes, it is has a spine, and it looks nice, and it has professional-grade art and, you know, production values. <laughs> And then they would say, okay, cool, we'll solicit orders from all of our customers. And then they would come back and they would say, okay, we'll take 2,000 copies. Okay, we need 800 more. Okay, we need, you know, 200 more. Okay, do you have any more? You know, wow. and it's like the same thing we saw play out with Ingram, like when the companies got more consolidated and bigger, instead of being able to sell more of our books, they sold less of our books. We, I'd say the biggest factor here is the book market has changed dramatically in 20 years, you know, that you went from tens of thousands of ISBNs being registered per year to over a million being registered per year. You know, I feel like that's the maybe the largest factor. Boy. You know, we have to compete with a lot more books, we have to compete with a lot more comic books, and like by 2009, we would publish a book, announce it to Diamond, and they would say, no, we don't think there's any market for this book. And then often what would happen is they would come back a year later and be like, why don't we offer this book? We're getting orders from this book. You know? And then that was a pretty good weapon for a while to be like, do you remember that time that you passed on a book and then asked us why we didn't sell it to you? Don't pass on this new book. Well, you know, now it's kind of to the point where you have to like talk about the artistic merits and the, you know, they want to know like every award that the illustrator has won. Almost all of our authors are first time debuts so they don't have, you know, a, they have a lot of hype and they have a lot of talent and skills and expertise, but they don't have like a lot of awards under their belt because they're brand new at it. So in short, it's been mixed. Diamond is good because when you sell books to Diamond, they're sold. They don't get returned. There's, you know, they're committed. The retailers have already ordered them. They sell through as you put it in the book and trade. The third part of the reader's question is, what do you think of the world of comics needs to change after the pandemic? In summary, the world of comics after the pandemic, it really just needs, ideally, some stability, ideally some more competition, you know, the return to two separate equals, you know? It wasn't even that long ago where Haven was the company that sold backlist comics, whereas Diamond was the company that sold new comics. I mean, that was 10 years ago. I mean, not to sound old, but that is of this generation, you know. Thanks for joining us. I am Joe Beal, the autistic publisher, author of A People's Guide to Publishing, the book, and founder and CEO of Microcosm. And I'm Ellie Blue. I'm attached to us. I'm basically the caretaker for a small dog. Thanks for joining us once again. Please send your questions to podcast at microcosmpublishing.com so we can answer them on future episodes. And please give us five stars on iTunes and everywhere else that podcasts are reviewed. You can find us on the internet at microcosm.pub. On Twitter at microcosm. On Facebook at microcosm publishing on Instagram at microcosm underscore pub. And here in Portland, Oregon on North Williams Avenue. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful week.